Hey guys, just like I promised before, I will show you how to create the automated subscription tracker we have in the finance brain. If you don't know much about it, let me show you how it works. For example, let's go here and create any subscription. Let's say, for example, Framer. Let's say the status is active. Let's add the original payment. Let's make it um, June 2025 on a day, let's say 10, for example. The recurrent is monthly. Uh, I can fill all the other properties like the budgeting category, the accounts, but I'm going to it's not necessary for this tutorial. Let's add the cost as 20 bucks. All right, so that's it. Now, where's the cool feature? Where's the automation? So let me show you. Now, if we go to the month database here, or let, let me go here. As you noticed first, that we didn't relate the subscription we just created to any other database. We just add the information like the cost, original payments, and the status, that's it. But if we go to the month database here, if we go, for example, to October 2025, we can see here we have the subscription cost, which is 20 bucks of Framer. But as you remember, we didn't relate it to this page here. And if we click on the relation, it's actually a not relation, it's a formula. Now, as you remember, if we go to our um, subscription here, the original payment we said is June 10. So we should see this subscription on May, we should see it, sorry, on August, September, and other months. But for example, if we go to um, May here, we will not see it, right? If we go to April, we will not see it too. If we go to March 2025, we're not going to see it. If we go to August, here is it. If we go to July, here is it too. Now let's pretend that we finished this subscription on a specific date, for example. So I'm just going to click on more properties here. And let's say, um, I finished this subscription on September 4, all right? First of all, let's make the status is finished. So now the last payment was August 10, all right? Now, if we go to the month's database here, we go to October, we don't see it. We go to September, we also don't see it. And yeah, because we ended on September 4, that's why we don't see it. If we go to August, we will see this subscription. So how cool is that, this automated subscription tracker without doing any relation? So today, let me show you how to create it. I already created this demo here, so you can download this for free. But let me show you and walk you through step-by-step step how we can create this automated subscription tracker. So let's get started. First, I'm going to delete all those databases and it starts from scratch. We will need three databases. The first one, obviously, is the subscription tracker. So let's add a table view here and let's name it subscriptions. Um, I'm going to name it demo, all right? because I already have too many subscriptions page in my workspace. And let's name it subscriptions, right? Let's add the month database and let's name it months demo. Let's add the bridge, what I call it the bridge. So in finance brain template, it's the bridge represents the profile. But here I'm just going to keep it simple. So the bridge, and let's hide it. Let's name it bridge. So let's go to the subscription here and let's add new subscription template. Let's add some properties. First of all, let's add an icon, something like repeat. First, let's add the status. So we need not started, active, and finish it, right? Then let's add um, original payment date and let's add um, the cost. So it's a number, cost, let's make it US dollar. Then let's add the last thing, which is um, the subscription end date. So we need a date and let's name it subscription end date. And now we are, what we are going to do is go and create an automation. Now, if you are on a free Notion plan, you only have access to create one automation, I think, and you can uh, you can duplicate templates with automation. So for example, you can du duplicate this template, but you can't edit this automation. If you have a business plan or plus plan, you can create an automation. So let's name this one subscription and date. And when the status is finished, I want you to edit, yeah, to edit the subscription and date and add date triggered. And let's enable this one. Let's go and set this template as default and let's just this if it's working. So not started active, then finish it, then it should be created um, automatically. So yeah, October, 2022, that's right. Let's go back 
and add more properties. So next property will be, um, we forget to add it first, which is the recurring. So recurring, and we have three options. We have monthly, uh, quarterly, and finally yearly. Let me just remove this one here. And now let's add the formula of last payment, all right? I already have it, so I'm just going to paste it to not waste time. So here is it, last payment formula. Let me just order those stuff here, original payment, status first, then recurring, um, the cost here, last payments. So basically the last payment finds the most recent payment date for each subscription if it's still active, it calculates the last time you pay it based on how many months, quarter, or years have passed since the start date. If it's finished, it locks the last payment as the end date, so it doesn't keep counting forward. For example, let's say you started Netflix in January 5, and it's a monthly recurring. The formula counts January 5, February 5, March 5, until now, or until it's marked as finished. You will get the points when 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 you create when we create a um, subscription example. Now let's add the next payment formula. So next payment formula here. I'm just going to paste it. So this next payment formula shows when the next payment will happen, but only if the subscription as always is active, not finished. If it's finished instead of showing a date, it will show the text as this as blue here, subscription not active, all right? And basically it looks at one more cycle, which could be month, quarter, or year, and that's your next payment. So that's how it works. Now let's move and create the final formula, which is the month. And what I mean by the month, basically, it decides if you actually pay it this month or not. Or it will show you, um, for example, if the subscription payment date has already happened this month. For example, uh, the original payment is on 12 January, all right? And now currently we are on 2022 of October 2025. That means it will show me the cost of that subscription because we pay it. If the original payment was um, 25 January, it will not show me until that day will come. So that's what makes your finance dashboard accurate even when you cancel a subscription in the middle of the month, right? So this is a useful uh, formula. Actually, we will not need this in this demo of the template, but I need this in my um, Notion Finance Brain for the budgeting uh, category. So that's another thing. You can check the Finance Brain video to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. um, we will not need this, but I just want to add it. So here it is. Now let me just edit this property and make it US dollars too. The final property we will add is a relation to our bridge. So bridge, here is it. And let's make it two-way relation. And let's name it subs, subscription like that. All right. And automatically we are going, and here we are going to add a bridge um, page. Only, we are going only to need one bridge page. All right. Now let's go back to our template and set that whenever a new subscription is going to be created, um, the, it should be related to the bridge page, all right? Then you can hide it, for example, if you don't want to see it. Also, the subscription and date should be hidden if the um, if it's not filled, all right? So yeah, let's go here and create a new subscription, for example. So let's go and name it Framer. I always took this example as my favorite one. So monthly, or for example, Twitter, you can add. The cost will be 20 bucks. The original payment, so let's say we paid on July 3. Uh, so the last payment was October 3, that's correct. And here, let's make it active so we can see the next payment. The next payment will be November 3, all right? If we switch it to finished, for example, and let's pretend, all right, let's pretend that we finish it on September, not October 2022. Or for example, let's say on October 1, that means the last payment was September 3, all right? So that's cool. Um, but now let's just make it active back and let me just clear it, all right? Now let's move to the month database. And let's create new templates. Um, where is it? Let's set it as default. And let's go to edit, new month. I'm going to keep it simple here. Um, as you can see on the finance brain template, there's too many properties that calculate the balance of the month. But for now, I'm just going to focus on subscription properties. So I'm going to add date, right? And it will be today. I just add an icon here, something like month, right? Then I'm going to add relation to the bridge. So where is the bridge? 
Where is it? Let's make it to where relation. Let's name it uh, month. Doesn't matter. Or months. Um, it should be related to the bridge page. Then what I'm going to create is an automation. And I want also to express a notion bug that I hope they can fix it sooner. For example, I'm going to so I'm going to add an automation and call this month name. And once a page is going to be added, I want you to change the name of the from the new month to the actual month. Let me show you. We are going to add format date, the trigger page date. I want you to take from this trigger page date that will be created the three letters of the month and the year. And let's save it. And let me show you. Now, if we create a new page, right, just like that, and we open it, so automatically, as you can see, the date has name has been changed from new month to October 2025 or August 2025 as a shortcut. Now, that's beautiful. And you will think, all right, if I make this page recurring that will be repeatable every single month at the start for the month, uh, I don't have to do any work. It will be created and the name will be changed. And that's wrong because I tested this many times. And for example, if we set this one repeat, uh, let me just make it repeat every single day. And now is 6 p.m. and and half. So let's go and add 6 p.m. and 45, all right? I'm going to save it and I'm going to wait until 6 p.m. 45. It will be created and the name is not going to be changed. Let me show you. So now it's uh, the 6 p.m. and it's 6 p.m. 15 minutes. Um, it has been created, but it's still new month, not October 2020. So yeah, that's a problem. So then I think to myself, we need to change that. So what I did instead, any property edited. So when any property is going to be edited, for example, if we go here and let's make this one new month, right? Again, and I'm just going to add space here or anything. I already edited. It's changed it to October 2025. So for example, if you add an income, you add a subscription expenses, it will always remain as the date here, the three letters of the month and the year. So yeah, but the problem is whenever the month page will be created automatically, then you have for example, to add an income or just go here. Okay, when you notice it has been created, just go and add a space, for example. So it will um, change from new month to October or whatever the month it is. So I hope you get my point. Now let's go back and add some other properties. First, we need a um, formula, which is subscription cost. So here is it. Now let me explain how this formula works. Uh, before that, let me just edit um, the property from a number to a US dollar. So this formula goes through all your subscriptions. And what I mean by that, it's go to the, the bridge. And as you know, the bridge is related now to all subscription. So it, it checks all the subscription and checks the one that are active and valid in that month and some their costs. So for example, here, as you can see, we have 20 bucks. Why? Because if we go to last payment of this subscription of Framer, it was October 3. And now today is October 2022. Even if we change this one to back to, it doesn't matter here. All right? This date doesn't affect anything in the subscription cost. So I hope you get my point. The last payment was, so the last payment was October 3. That's why we are seeing the cost because we did pass this day. But if the original payment was, for example, um, 26, we will not see it because today is October 2022. So there's four days left until we pay. Because I, I might change my mind and I'm going to make it finished, right? So then it will not be calculated at all in this month. So that's how cool is it. Now let's go here and create other months so I can show you how it works. So I'm going to add September one and I'm going to add August one. I'm going to add, and as you can see, the names changed automatically when I change the date. So for example, let's add June and let's add finally May, all right? And let's say here in the Framer subscription, all right, that the original payment is um, June 7, for example. So here, as you can see, the subscription cost is 20 bucks uh, across all the months except May because we didn't pay on May. For example, if you make it on May here, it will be showing, but because it's 23, and this day still didn't come yet on October. That's why it shows us $0 here. If we make it finish it, for example, on 
So let's make it finish it August. And in the real life, you're not going to add subscription in this. It will be added automatically once you decide to finish the subscription. So let's say we are going to finish it August 24 and let's make the status finish it. As you can see here, we still paid on August, right? Because um, the original payment, as you know, it's 23. If we make it 16, we will not pay. So that's how you can automate a subscription tracker without doing anything. So all what you have to do, go here, add for example, Notion AI subscription, recurring is monthly, the cost is $10, the original payment um, doesn't matter, make it active and you can see all your information across all the months. I will leave the link of the template in the description below so you can duplicate it. And if you want a more advanced system, just like the finance brain where you can track more features, and you don't have the bridge, you have the profile, which you can check this year income expenses, the balance, um, you can check saving, debt, subscription, everything you can imagine. Uh, and 90% of it is automated. All you have to do, enter the things, uh, the income, the expenses, and the system would calculate it. So yeah, I will also leave the link of the templates in the description below, or actually you can get it for free. Yeah, it's actually cost $59, but if you get our system, Notion Second Brain 6.0, you get the finance brain fully integrated with the templates and for free. You are not going to add any extra penny, and you also get the game mode, which is our best selling template. Or if you are a content creator, you can get the creator brain, which is Notion's second brain for creator. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.